What's going on, family? Scott with Boxing Museum of the Forgotten Fisticuff Series. Now, I covered George Dixon a little earlier. And I went extensive on his career, but I didn't go through his Police Gazette section of the scrapbooks that I have. Now, I have two scrapbooks of African-American fighters. Each book is a thousand pages each. So since it's front and back, that would be 2,000 pieces of information per book, which means that would be 4,000 pages of information of African-American fighters. I basically have all African-American fighters that you can think of. I can't put them on the Internet, but they're fighters that your average historian doesn't even know about. And there's information in there that is just unbelievable about the Battle Royales and the fight to the death. George Dixon was in a lot of those matches. He was in two of those matches, fight to the death, which means somebody didn't come out alive. That was guaranteed. And he fought over a thousand times. I have all these, all that information. But what I wanted to share with you today, and also George Dixon, I have 90 pages of information of George Dixon. So I basically have everything you need to know about George Dixon. And uh, one of the books of the African-American scrapbooks. So he's facing Eddie Pierce. So here you have George Dixon and Eddie Pierce. And now let's go through tail of the tape here. So George Dixon stood five foot three and a half inches. And Pierce stood five foot five and a half inches. But the arm length was 28 inches for George Dixon. And it was 27 inches for Eddie Pierce. And I'm just kind of scanning around here. I just wanted to give you just somewhat of an insight on his articles here. Let's go to the next page. So you have here, they fought at the Lennox Athletic Club in New York City. January 18, 1899, George Dixon knocks out an Australian boxer, otherwise known as Young Pluto, in the 10th round of international March, uh, match. Excuse me. He was a winner plays throughout for stomach. Then press KO punch to the jaw. So these terminologies are basically what they're saying is that George Dixon knocked out Young Pluto with a stomach and then a head punch. Knocked him out smooth. Now I have another article here. And this one is against George Dixon. George Dixon's last stand. This fight took place in Philadelphia. It was with uh, Tommy Murphy. They used to call him Harlem Tommy Murphy. Great crowd of, in Philadelphia. Touched by Little Negro's game fight against Harlem Tommy Murphy. It ended by a knockout in the second round, mark passing of the old time ring idol. Other notable battles reviewed. So as you go through this, you're going to see one of the saddest and most affecting scenes ever witnessed by the gatherings of American boxing fans was the knockout of Little George Dixon. They call him Little Chocolate. He was then featherweight ex-champion by Harlem Tommy Murphy in the second round at the National Athletic Club, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, 16 years ago this month. So they're going uh, back, you know, within the fight. But, um, yeah, this was something else. And as you go into it more, Moore fell asleep in second. Let's go to another page. Now, this was the fight of George Dixon's last stand against Terry McGovern. After a brief show of his best form, Little Chocolate finally crumbled in the eighth round of fierce battle fought 25 years ago in a Broadway club, this city.
This is phenomenal information. So I, I'm just basically scanning through a little bit here, but I just wanted to share, uh, shine a little bit more light on George Dixon. So what I'm going to do eventually, so I want to start a live stream where I can really show a lot of the stuff that I do have. It'll probably be in a scrapbook collection series, like four or five. I'm not really sure how I'll do that, but I have a lot of information. And I'm just, you know, kind of teasing you a little bit by sharing bits and pieces. But I have information in here that is not in books. Because I have I know that personally because I have authors knocking on my door all the time, trying to get a hold of my stuff so that they can print it. And uh really make money off of it. They can't they can't find it. It doesn't exist. Only I have it. And I'm probably one of five or four people in the entire planet that have this stuff. Uh, it just doesn't exist. So a scrapbook box and museum of the forgotten fistic of series. Thanks for hanging in there with me. I just wanted to share a little bit more light on George Dixon. We'll get back to the next page. And uh, this is August 19, 1893. These are all original articles. And like I said, I have over 2,000 pages of information on African American fighters in one book and 2,000 pages of information in another book. So it's basically a 1,000 pages, but when you go front and back, there are 2,000 pages. So it's 4,000 pages of information. Basically everything you can exist, uh, think of. Tom Molinak and uh, Molyneux and, and Bill Richmond. And going back further and further and further. So salute to my subscribers. Thanks for hanging in with me. Salute to George Dixon. Peace.